Hello and welcome. Today's topic is about KDM configuration in Red Hat Enterprise Linux Server 7. I'm currently running a Red Hat Enterprise Linux Server 7.3 and if I just bring my console here you can able to see the server information. So it is running 7.3. Right, so what is KDM? The first question. The KDM is nothing but a feature which, which we have in Linux kernel and that features help us to dump the memory information into a file so that file we call a vm core so example you have your system which is hung or it is crashed so now you don't know what is the reason behind it so what kdm will going to do if you have configured then it will capture a f uh, capture a memory file or memory image which is also known as a vm core which will which will have the all information so later what we can do we can determine that vm core file to see what caused the issue or why the system was in hung state okay so to capture the vm core information we need a tool called kexe c tool so this tool will help us to avoid going through the bios booting process and instead of that it will load your temporary load a new temporary kernel and it will help to capture this vm core file so that is why we need a kexc tool installed in the system so first thing what we needed we need to install the kexc tools and here you can also see the configuration the kdom configuration file is this one kdom.conf and service associated is kdom and default when we configure a kdom the location the vm core file will going to dump into inside this var crash location so that can be changed so now let's go to my console here and let's start the, uh, the configuration process so first thing like i said i need to install uh, rpm call kexc tool kexc tools so by default since i have installed this system with gui by default this package is installed so in your case if this package is not installed you probably need to install this package so you just simply need to do a yum install and you need to ensure your repository is configured so once i have done this what i need to do next thing is i need to allocate or i need to reserve a memory for my crash dump because when the system will crash and reboot and will try to capture the vm core image it needs memory without memory it won't be able to capture the data or, or the vm core file so that is why we need to specify or reserve some amount of memory for crash dump so to allocate that information we have a file so that file is under slash boot grub grub2 dot cfc uh, grub2 dot cfg so this is the file so earlier the earlier version which we are using in Red Hat Enterprise Linux probably Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 or 5 we had grub not uh, it is it was only just grub and now it is introduced an enhanced version which is called grub2 so now we cannot configure or we cannot edit this file why because let me tell you if I just go to grub and just do a vi for this file and first line it says about do not edit this file so it is recommended that we, sh we should not edit this file instead we need to edit this slash etc default grub file and update this file with the command of grub to mkconfig so that is why it is recommended not to use this file or edit this file 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go inside this file. I'll do a vi slash etc default and grub. So inside this file, we have a line for the crest dump. So now you can probably go with the auto, but I'm going to use or I'm going to allocate some amount of memory in my system currently I have 2 GB of memory and I'm going to allocate 128 MB of size for crash dump and also ensure that this this line should not be in the beginning instead you should be put this information at the end of your file because sometimes what happen if you crash your system it is unable to find the swap volume and that ca that cause an issue and you won't be able to capture the VM core so that is why we need to specify this information at the end of this line so I'm just going to copy this line here let me just highlight it and copy here space and let me just remove this line because I already mentioned this crash information in this location so I just forgot to update see here so it is now crash kernel equal to 128 MB so we just have to update this line here and once you update just save the file and to make the change in the actual configuration file which is grub.cfg we need to run this command grub2 mk config and minus off for option and boot grub2 grub.cfg so now I just updated the file and saying that I have reserved 128 MB of memory for custom I can double check whether it is updated or not 128 boot grub to grub.cfg and now I can see the crash kernel okay I think the spelling is not correct here so I need to do it again so now it should be good so let me just run this command again and let me just double check whether it is showing here or not so it is showing so now next step is I need to restart my system to reserve this memory for crash kernel so let me just reboot it system ctl reboot So now my system is up. Let me just log in. So it is up. Let me just take a terminal quickly and issue to root okay so I can also double check whether it is reserved or not in DMSS output 
So let me just grab for kernel in D message and now I can able to see in the D message it is saying reserving 128 MB of memory out of 2 GB of 2047 memory for crash kernel. So that means it looks good. So now next thing next step is to start the service. So it is the same thing again if you are familiar with RHL 7 command so we just have to start the kdm service so it is kdm It is taking a little time. And we should be good momentarily. It should give me a bash prompt here. So meanwhile, I can go to a different window. or different terminal here by clicking or pressing control shift T and maximize the font size so it is started now and let me just enable it so that when my system is rebooted the service comes up along with that so I just enabled it so now next step is to configure the settings. So default the configuration file like I mentioned it is slash etc kdom.conf. So if you just go through this file it has all the information which we can use. So there are many information we can copy this VM core while the system is boot or uh, the VM core is captured it can be copy the VM core file to remote location so for that there is some option we need to enable an SSS uh, passwordless authentication and we also specify user and which server it is going to be copy so that information we need to specify and there is something called call collector so which will actually help us to compress our VM core file as much as a smaller size so that is why we use this VM call collector and there are a few options which you can use and let me just go end of this file and there are some options like default option is reboot so when this uh, when we will initiate a CADM whether a system going to reboot or it will halt or power off and whether it will give you, give you a bash prompt so those are the options we have it so we will make those changes and there, these are the default example given so whether you can use a separate var crash file system or you can use the root file system currently I don't have a separate file system so I'm going to use the same root file system and under that we have slash var crash directory so I'm going to go with the default and if you wanted to create a separate file system you can specify which are the file system type you are using and you have to specify the file system information like this here either way is fine and the call collector dump I will just going to has this information here for now uh, let me just go one line below here and make a minus C which will be which will going to compress the file and default option which is mentioning as shell I'm going to say as reboot So these are the basic configuration which you need to do 
and apart from that if you wanted to copy the vm core file in remote location you probably need to enable this whether through nfs or through ssh right so i'm just going to show you with this configuration and this looks good for me and i did a mistake i would have restored this service after editing these files not an issue so what i have to do is i just need to restore the service one more time and once i have done that i'm good so ne the next step is i wanted to crash this system and why i wanted to check whether my vm core images are generating or not right to, to do that we have some command called sysrq so what is sysrq so let me just open a txt file which is i have just saved it under this location csrq okay so csrq is nothing but it is called as a magic key which we have in a linux kernel it's uh, it is understandable by the linux kernel so that we can pass some low level of command so example your system is in in hung or freeze states you are barely run any command and you wanted to reboot your system so in that case if you just reboot your system or if you hard reboot your system your file system may got corrupt right so to avoid that we have some features which is something called csrq so through csrq we can reboot the system and it will not corrupt your file system so this is a very useful command which can be used so default option or default parameter you can able to see about csrq in this location and there are some settings you would be able to see so the first setting is zero which is a disable and one is for enabling all the function and there are other options like 16 so default it is 16 so which means the what are the information is currently holding by your kernel those will sync before your system reboot we can also manually pass this information through echo minus s prox sys trigger command so this is what the sysrq is and this is the benefit of sysrq so now what i'm going to do i'm going to crash this system the first thing what i have to ensure is the sysrq is enabled so let me just make the change proc sys kernel sysrq so i just enabled it and now i can sync the current information the current memory information holding by kernel with this command sorry i just need to say get it in here right so now it is synced and now the next step i'm going to crash it to crash the system there is a flag called c and through that we can crash our system and before that we can also ensure whether my kdump is functional or not so we can run system ctl status kdump and i can able to see my services are running and here one good thing is we the service kdump command is also work so if you can like this you can check like this as well like we are using in previous distribution for red hat and one more option you can able to see system ctl is active kdom so it should say active so that means my kdom is running fine so now i'm going to crash it so to do that i'll do this proc sys 
IQ trigger. So once I enter this, it should capture the memory dump into VM core. Now you can able to see there is something happening which is you can see copying data and the percentage is now completed 25% and it is depend on the crash dump memory size which you have mentioned I have mentioned 128 MB so if you have specified more then it will going to capture your crash dump faster so depend on the memory size you have specified it will it will increase your performance to capturing the memory data so it is currently 50 60 percent is and I believe in another probably 10 second we would be able to capture the information and once it is captured you would be able to see the system will reboot and it is 83 percent done and we are almost there so the VM core is now captured and I would be able to see the VM core information under work crash as I mentioned in slash etc kdm configuration so let the system boots up it will not going to take much time because it is running nothing so it will probably going to take hardly one or two minutes so my system is up and let me just log in in so my system is up and let me just take a terminal here let me switch to root and increase the font size okay so now if I do a dfh see I do not have a separate file system so var crash is under slash and it is var crash so if i just go and set this directory now i can see a new directory created with the timestamp when the system is crashed so this is the timestamp and it is default the ip is taken the loopback ip which is a local ip so now if i just go inside this directory and do an ls let me just clear the screen and I can able to see there is a VM core file which is generated and I can be able to do a du minus sh to see the size of it so now I can see the size is around 300 MB so this VM core file size is depend on your memory so how much memory in your system so currently I have a memory of around 2 GB so it is as advisable or Red Hat recommend that whether uh, for example if you have 16 GB of memory so it is recommended that you have the work crash file system what are the file system whether it is a separate or under root should have the same amount of size if your memory is 16 GB then your file system also needs to be the same size so this is the recommendation from Red Hat so for currently since I have only 2 GB of memory so the size is around 300 so it depends in your memory if your memory is 16 GB then definitely your VM core size will going to be a huge size so please keep that in mind so now the thing is the next step is to analyze it the analyze the VM core file and check whether why my system got crashed and why this VM core generated so I wanted to analyze it so if you have subscribed your system 
with Red Hat, you can able to provide this VM code to Red Hat and they would be able to tell you why your system is crashed. And this also you can be able to do it with debug info kernel. So I have an another system where my debug info kernel is installed and let me show you the another system is this one. So this system is the same Red Hat system running the server name is server 02 and my IP is 136. So let me just copy the VM core file into this and let's analyze the file. So do an ls I think it is under I have to go inside this location or you can directly copy not an issue. So let me just do an SAP VM core and my IP is 192.168.169.136 and I'm going to save this file inside temp directory. Sorry, okay. I did not specify the username, so which default take the root username. So it is currently copying to my remote server, which is server 2. And it is copied so let me just go to my server to here and let's see whether my vim core is available here or not let me just do an ls vm core so here is the file so to analyze this we need to install a kernel call kernel debug info and there is a command called crash so default it is install if it is not installed you just have to do yum install crash and it will install your crash rpm and for debug it debug info kernel you need to do a debug info install and kernel so it will it will install your debug info kernel so i have already installed the kernel and now if i just locate it for that location where it is vm linux and currently it is under this location so now i need to run crash command and specify my debug info kernel and inside this i have the vm core which i'm going to analyze so let me just run this command there is some warning that can be ignored okay so I have got an information about the kernel my remote system which I have crashed it so with this kernel I can able to see so now my system name is RA server right that is the system which I have it and where I crashed my kernel and the other information about which time it is crashed and why your kernel is panicked so here you can see sysrq was initiated and it is triggered by sysrq so that is the command due to my kernel panic so you have your root cause here itself so now also you will get some other information through bash command somebody ran this sysrq and not only that you would be able to see other information like your system you can run sys and you'd be able to see a similar information like 
why it is crash and you can also check uh, other information like swap so whether when the system is crash whether you have a high swap utilization or not so we can check so here you cannot see any issues and to check more option it you just need to run help command and here here you would be able to see other information so example if you wanted to analyze the log so if you just check the log here you'd be able to see the more information about the system so if I just go last line here I can able to see that the sysrq command was triggered and that is why the system is crashed and there are other options like let me just do unhelp again and you can see other information about the files so whenever when the system was crashed whether how many open files are there in that particular time so you can just run this files command and you can able to see if there are any open files so like that you can be able to see your crash dump information you can be able to analyze your vm core information for more you can just do help and you can specify and basically in sys you'll get your information why the system is crashed so here it is saying panic due to sysrq command is triggered so that is why my system was crashed so this is how you have to configure your crash uh, dump in red hat enterprise servers this process also can be followed in centos and a little different configuration in SUSE enterprise linux service i can probably prepare a, a different video for that and i can show you how we need to configure in SUSE linux okay so that's it for now i had to show you how kdump is configured and how to crash it and how to analyze a vm core file so that's it for video if you like this video or if you think this content is useful for useful for you please subscribe my channel for more video like this and also please hit like okay so that's it thank you so much for watching this video have a good day see you next time